tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Let's get started with animation. Hello friends, a while ago I modeled a coronavirus, the COVID-19 virus, uh, at least I tried to, and today we'll model a face mask. Both things are sort of related, but uh, uh, forget about the virus today. We really want to forget about the virus anyway. Uh, my main pool for materials, and you see these materials appear in many of my tutorials, uh, come from substance. A logarithmic substance uh, is a provider of software. And my favorite one is the Alchemist. And uh, I did tutorials about Alchemist. It's just magic. Uh, but for the f for the face mask, you don't need any anything special because it's a process of uh, end cloth and nothing else really. But I downloaded um, this substance here, and as you can see, as it changes while I hover the mouse over it, that it's a procedural texture. That's uh, pretty amazing because in Alchemist, uh, in Alchemist, you can now change all the patterns um, according to your taste. But I'll do it straightforward. This is a, uh, I downloaded it already, and um, uh, i show you how to import it into Maya. That's the first step we're going to take. So this is the empty scene. We need to go to the hypershader. And in the hypershade window, you see the basic shaders you have. That's the Lambert shader. There's no object in the scene, but once you create an object, it will be uh, this gray Lambert shader will be the material of that object. Uh, what we need to do, and uh, we just uh, click somewhere in the open space here and press the key tab, and we need substance. And here you see, I just typed in substance, uh, it's all enough already. We need a substance texture node, this, this one. And um, this is the starting point, and it, it's actually, it was a very tedious process in the past, but now it's it's really simple. Substance node, we select this. We don't care about anything in here and the connections. We just select it. And uh, now we go down here. Now this is the attribute editor of the substance node, which we just created. And the first step is, it's uh, actually only two steps we need to take. The first step is we load a substance material. Of course, you have to put it into your Maya folder to find it properly. And uh, this is this is the one we just downloaded. And it's an SBSAR format, which is just fine here. So we select it and open it, and it lands here. And now the second step is we raise the resolution just a little bit. We can raise it later, adjust it later if we need more detail. But 1024 is quite good. Now we see all these things here and we don't care about them because we just select our renderer and in my case it's Arnold because it's been delivered with Maya. But you can also choose Renderman, V-Ray, Redshift, Maxwell. So I create a shader network now. This is the last click in this uh, amazing window here. And watch out what's happening with this window part here. Create shader network. <laughs> And that's something which uh, I did a tutorial about this. It looks quite impressive and uh, it is easy to use really. And here we have an Arnold Standard sh uh, Surface Shader which um, we will use for our cloth. Now comes the geometry part. We prepared the material and now comes the geometry part. Well, end cloth, you reach end cloth by clicking here selecting the FX module. This is the end cloth menu. Pretty simple, two entrances here. And um, now we go for a head. Find any head you get. Uh, I just do it the easy way. General editors, under Windows, general editors, you go to the content browser. And in the content browser, you do have modeling, sculpting base meshes, bipeds, and here we have a basic head. It's a very simple head, but uh, I think it serves our purpose. I double click it and it lands in the scene. It's gigantic because we're dealing with character animation, so to say here. But uh, in this case, I'll scale it down quite a bit. The key F is very helpful here because it frames our object. 
And I think this is good. Now, NCLOTH is a dynamic system. And dynamic systems work with gravitation. So the objects in NCLOTH tend to fall down unless you do certain things, which we don't need to discuss now. But uh, in order to make this falling down process use it here, we just rotate this head. And we can press and hold the key J to snap the rotation. And I think this is a 90 degree rotation, so the head is just fine here. Let's have a brief look at the resolution. It's not very high, but it gives us a detailed look at the, at the nose and the basic structure of the head. There's no mouth here, which we could, we could model a mouse, but I try to keep things simple because you can adjust everything here and make it more complex according to your taste and the need for your project. Okay, so we have the head now, and now we create a cloth. And the cloth needs to be a polygon. And uh, the ideal thing, of course, is the polygon plane. And we scale it up quite a bit, because it needs to fit the nose and the mouth. Now it's good to go to the top window. You briefly uh, tap the spacebar, and then you see all the orthogonal windows, and this is the spacebar again, and this is the view from the top, which is just fine. And I think we can adjust it like this, and I think that's good. If you want to uh, have more detail, and more detail is crucial here, you need to go to the polyplane node here, and change the resolution. The subdivisions are currently 10 and uh, 50 is not bad at all. We have a quite a high dense network now. Um, this is not NCLOTH yet, but once we select it and create NCLOTH here, this is cloth. You see the yellow marker here and here you see the nucleus. This is the basic node which provides gravity, for example, and wind. We don't have wind here. So we let it fall now by running the simulation. And the best thing, right mouse click in the timeline, is to have a playback speed set to play every frame and maximum of real time. So it doesn't speed up that much with minor calculations. So the cloth falls down and through the head because it does not feel the head. Now, um, I want a nice texture now. Right mouse click. And you see it's very comfortable. It's here now. Assign an existing material. And here we have an AI standard surface shader. Uh, we have a standard surface one here as well, but we are dealing with Arnold and the Arnold shaders always start with AI. So we apply this. And now let's have a look here. Beautiful. And the head um, needs to be a collision object. Go to create a passive collider. No error message, so what happens now when we run the simulation? And you see it falls down and it falls down even further. This is not bad at all, but it does not serve our purpose to have a static nose-mouth mask. So what we'll do is we need to add stickiness. Both objects can be sticky. Let's go to the rigid shape, This the head and make the head more sticky. Here is the stickiness. Rigid shape and stickiness. Let's raise this to two. What do you think about this? Now, um, we're almost finished. Actually, we are finished. But uh, I want to show you something which uh, maybe happens when you run the simulation, you could have penetration. So the cloth goes a little bit through the nose, for example. In this case, it does not. But in other contexts, it depends on the size of the scene, basically. Um, uh, you can have uh, this kind of penetration of end cloth with uh, mesh geometry. In this case, I recommend you to change the dimensions, so make everything small as it's here. Uh, and you might consider making this head more complex in terms of geometry by smoothing it. Uh, modeling and mesh 
and smooth. I don't need to do it here because it works already pretty fine, but with a smoothed mesh you have a more complex geometry for the end cloth to react with. Now I want to have the head upright. When I rotate it up upright it uh, messes up the whole simu simulation. That's why I just duplicate this. Control D. Now I have a plane number two here in the outliner and I select the head in addition to the plane and I put both in a group. That's Control G. Here is the locator for that group. And now I rotate the group with a key J holding the key J and I'm done. This is the end cloth, this is the duplicate and the duplicate does not know anything about simulation. So I can now delete end cloth, the rigid body, the nucleus and the first plane. And I have my mask applied to that head. If you animate the head, the mask won't animate with it. It won't behave like real cloth. But um, this is a different situation. And of course you can create cloth. And I did tutorials about that for walking characters, etc. With this, I wish you a very nice day. Bye-bye.